Hello, everyone. It's Kate Stillman with yogahealer.com, and I'm here with Anna Berkelmans, and we're going to talk about weight creep. Dun 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 dun. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna share my screen, and we're just gonna get we're gonna get right into like what's really going on with weight creep, and why is it why is it such a big deal? Um, why is it so hard for people to reverse? Hold on. Why isn't it sharing my screen? Let's see if this will work. All right, good. So 50%, this is petrifying, Anna. Um, I think I told you this yesterday that, like right now in the United States of America, life, liberty, and freedom, 30% uh, of adults, of the adult population in America is, is obese, not overweight, is obese and that by 2030, that number is going up to 50%. So a lot of what I want to do today is, is, is kind of get into, is kind of get into this. All right. So what happens with like, someone just doesn't become obese, right? Like someone gains a little bit of weight and then a little bit more weight and then a little bit more weight and then a little bit more weight. And so weight creep to me, I know a lot of you thinking like, I don't have an obesity problem. And I'm like, awesome. That's awesome. Um, and I want to show some before and after pictures of like, people can go both ways. Like you can go, if your weight is creeping just a pound or two, like you can get lighter or you can, or you can do the other before and after where the before is thinner and the after is, is heavier. And what I really want to get into today is what causes weight creep and how to reverse weight creep and really what's behind it. It's, um, uh, I look at I look at like what's happened with weight in America. It actually parallels inflation. So the rise in inflammation and chronic inflammation and chronic inflammatory diseases parallels the rise in vegetable oil and sugar, parallels inflation, like how much a dollar is worth year after year. And so we're bloated in so many ways. And there and, and what so many of us are just craving is simplicity and lightness and rest and to be rested and that experience and we want to experience our own creative you know creativity we want to experience our own design as a human being but what happens when we're when we're literally weighed down right when we're on the heavier side of ourselves and the lighter side uh is that it's not just about the weight it's really to me the weight is just a side effect of so much else going wrong uh and why it goes wrong if we look at the habits it's like these it's like just exactly the same as inflation where you just like you in, there's a problem and to solve the problem would require work so and you don't want to feel do the work and so you just print money well the same thing's happening with negative stressors where you know as our weight is creeping maybe it's just five pounds then maybe it's just 10 pounds maybe it's just a pant size and then maybe it's just another five pounds in the next year. And then maybe it's just another two pounds in the next year. But cumulatively, now we're up like 20 pounds as it just creeps. And, and the habits behind the creep, and we'll, we'll get into why these habits, like what they're actually doing in our physiology. Because it's not about being like a good girl or a bad boy. It's like so much about being in touch with how your body is changing and evolving through the stages of life. And realizing that less is more as you get older and realizing that you need long term horizons as you get older. So you can't do short term fixes as you get older, like printing money is a short term fix. Just being like, I'm emotionally upset. I don't like my job or my partner or my life. So I'm going to eat a donut or I'm going to have some chips or I'm going to have an extra handful of almonds or I'm going to break my fast too early or I'm just going to get some ice cream after <laughs> dinner and watch a movie and check out, you know, the problems. There's problems. And when, you know, when economies don't deal with inflation, they get bloated and everything's worth less and the system doesn't work. And that's really what's happening in people's, people's bodies. Okay. So degenerative habits, snacking, eating late, sedentary lifestyle, convenience, food, short-term decisions. And I want to highlight short-term decisions. There's always a bigger issue. There's always a bigger issue under weight gain. Always. Like, why are you putting so much load on your physiology? You really want to obsess about that and you want to get help around that and we can help you. Worry and negative thinking is a huge negative stressor that creates emotional inflammation and people are sacrificing sleep. Sacrificing sleep is a massive, massive correlate of weight creep. Okay, 
So more before and after pictures. Just know you can always you can always change your body size. You can change your body size actually pretty easily and pretty quickly. So to me, that's just good to know. People do it all the time. Men do it, women do it, and people are always happier when their body is fit and lean. So chronic inflammation, um, it's really linked. It's, you know, this is part of this whole chronic inflammation series. And if you have chronic inflammation, weight creep is a, is a telltale sign. If you have weight creep, you have chronic inflammation. It's not a question mark. There's no question mark in that at all. It's a like, yes, no, that means you have it. So what does that mean? Well, when you have chronic inflammation, this is from Harvard Medical School. Your body is in a constant state of high alert, the release of inflammatory chemicals. And that's what we're going to get into in a few minutes is what do you mean inflammatory chemicals? What does that mean? What's happening in your fat cells? What's happening in your blood cells? Like, let's find out. The release of inflammatory chemicals can affect many different systems of your body and be a cause or consequence of multiple diseases. So what's crazy to me about this image from Harvard Medical School is I'm like, where's the 30% of obese adults in this country, Harvard? <laughs> if you're a good medical school, maybe you should put like weight creep at the top of this list. Uh, and to me, this is like really a big part of the problem is it's hard to get good information. It's hard to know all these things that are tied together. And what we're here to do is make it super easy. I think what's good about this image here from Harvard is like, you can see how it affects your eyes and your heart and your blood vessels and your lungs and your liver and your digestive system and your skin and your brain and your spinal cord and your thyroid and your pancreas and your kidneys and your joints and in your immune system. Meaning like it's affecting everything and it goes towards disease. Right, so when we have chronic inflammation, we have weight creep, we've got chronic inflammation, and we got to know what's downstream because it's not just body acceptance movement. It's not just accepting being an extra 20 pounds more than your body wants to weigh or 40 or 60 or 80 or 100 or 200 pounds more than your body wants to weigh. It's about disease, right? And disease is really hard to reverse. Okay, so that's chronic disease in America. You can see it follows the same line as sugar consumption. It goes from a couple percentages 100 years ago to you know the majority, 60 to 80 percent. So that's following inflation, that's following sugar, that's following vegetable oil, and we have to understand like these are the these things are all connected, all connected. So if we don't want to do the hard work up front, we just accelerate our aging by inviting all these diseases and all these different organs. So it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Um, easy to do, no, simple to do, yes. <laughs> so that's kind of the nature of nature. But the thing is, is when you do the hard work, even if it's simple hard work, when you do that hard work, everything gets better. Everything, like the problems underneath the weight, that's what we want to look at. What are the problems underneath the weight? But we're not going to get into that today. We'll get into that another time. Okay, I'm going to go through this chart, but I'm going to go, I made some new charts, Anna. Um, I this whole idea of like changes to make that like there's there's a, at a level of breakdown and I want to get down the breakdown to the breakthrough because with weight creep things need to break down that aren't breaking down and there's a breakthrough that happens when you allow the natural cellular even intracellular breakdown process and to me there's a direct correlate between what's happening emotionally like what's happening with the issues underneath the issues with like something needs to break down for someone to have a breakthrough. Breakthrough in weight creep, breakthrough in chronic inflammation, breakthrough in reversing the diseases that you don't want to get down line, or if you already have these diseases, reversing these diseases now. All right. So breakdown goes to next level competencies. When you get next level competencies, you have a breakthrough. And then once you have a breakthrough, guess what? Like there's a whole new level, there's a new playing field, there's like a higher order. And then there's obstacles and challenges that present themselves. And when you engage with those obstacles and challenges, it breaks down what can exist at the higher level. And so then you need to gain competencies to break through at the higher level. And the cycle just keeps going. And it goes in a spiral, the breakdown breakthroughs. And so when you see a really evolved human being, someone that's inspiring, grounded, heart open, in flow, connected, impactful, that you're witnessing someone who's gone through many, many breakdown, breakthrough cycles and has higher level competencies, higher level order. And that to me is like, okay, good. Follow those people. <laughs> like if you find people like that, stick tight. <laughs> Don't let them go. So if sometimes I equate this, this weight creep, um, this, 
you know, the spiral that's going in the other direction where you're actually, because this can go the other way, where you're not having breakthroughs and you're losing competencies. And this is really what we're seeing with obesity. That's why I'm so, oh, upset, scared, um, concerned, <laughs> deeply concerned about half the population going towards obesity, because if half the population's already, whatever, we're at 60 to 70% of our US population's overweight, 30%'s obese, and we're going to more towards like 80 to 90% overweight and 50% obese, we're losing competencies. And we're losing those competencies to pass on to our children. We're actually in neurodegeneration now, so it's harder to learn. And when things are harder to learn, it's harder to, it's harder to teach an old dog new tricks. If we're accelerating aging, to me, this is like, oh, wait, we got to be aware, even if we're just up 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 15 pounds. Like, that's a signal that we're not going into next level competencies as our physiology changes, as, as every, I mean, and it's not just our physiology, like viruses and bacteria change along with us. The whole planet's evolving simultaneously together. And if we're not in sync with that, how technology's changing, techno homo sapiens are changing. If we're not in sync with next level competencies, that means we're degenerating. In business, there's this phrase, it's grow or die. And to me, that really applies to the human body too. It's like evolve or degenerate. It's more or less black and white. So this fear of hunger, this feel of digging into the deeper issues, in the conflict that comes from the deeper issues, maybe we don't like our job, maybe we don't like our spouse, maybe we don't like our kids, maybe we don't like our life, maybe we've created situations and buried them, that that's gonna come up and it's conflictual. It's hard, it's hard stuff. And it's, and it's embedded in hunger, in deep hunger, which is so curious. It's like, we don't really know what we really, really, really want, so we're not willing to go after it. So I just wanna presence this because if it's, if you can relate to that, I know in our intermittent fasting course, intermittent fasting challenge, wild habits challenge, we've done a lot of things around helping people find true hunger in a positive way, like really finding the gift of desire that's embedded within hunger. Yeah, and if you're watching this live, it's gonna be a podcast later too. If you're like, this is good, I wanna share it with a friend, we'll put it on a podcast. It's obviously better with the images, but ask your questions in the chat um, of what, or just comment on what's coming up. So this fear of hunger, fear of conflict, this idea that something's gotta break down, something's gotta break down in order to have a breakthrough. And I know for me, I went through this like new age airy fairy kind of phase where I was like, why does it have to be that way? Maybe you can just have breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough and I don't have to deal, and I don't have to deal with what? Conflict, hunger. Hunger is prioritization. Like, what do you really want? That's what the body does when it's hungry, it prioritizes. And we're gonna get into that on a cellular level. So on a cellular level, what's happening, this breakdown that only happens if you fasted for at least 13 hours, and it happens more for people that fast longer, which is why it's really important to get metabolic flexibility and mix up the length of your fasting time. So sometimes that might be 16 hours, sometimes 18, sometimes 20, sometimes 40 hours, sometimes 24 hours, or that you're mixing that up, that you're pushing. And some people are like, oh my gosh, that sounds impossible. I'm eating like every two minutes. <laughs> you know? And then you gotta get, why? Why are you eating every two minutes? Okay, so autophagy only happens, and this is the breakdown cycle within a cell. So within a cell, the cell, if it doesn't have food, it starts to actually feed on itself. And to me, that is so freaking cool. Like you wanna think of yourself so much more as a closed system than an open system. We are so incredibly durable as mammals and you can see this in your pets those of you who have pets like we're built for survival we're not built in this delicate way like your entire ancestral past <laughs> like you have it's so wild to even think about that like how much dna had to pass on for you to be you and you can fuck up your system majorly with weight creep like you can mess up the technology just like that and you are if you have weight creep you are messing with your technology. And I do not mean that as a judgment. I mean that because I know it's reversible and I know it's not that hard. If you're with the right people who are doing the right things, it's not that hard. The problem is by far and large, the majority of people are doing the wrong things. By far and large, people are taking the easy way out every time, which means they're doing these habits. They're snacking, they're eating late, they're eating too frequently, they're too sedentary, they're eating too much convenience food, 
They're making decisions for the short-term satiation. They're worrying and not acting on that worry, not letting that worry actually motivate change, which changes worry into, into actually focus <laughs> and drive and enthusiasm, um, and they're sacrificing sleep. So if you're hanging out with people that are doing that and you're doing that, it's not a winning strategy and you will accelerate your, your aging, which will go to the diseases of chronic inflammation, which we already reviewed in that Harvard image. Okay, so on a cellular level, the breakdown is autophagy. And we'll get into how that happens in a minute. On the entire cell level, so if an entire cell is too sick to regenerate, properly, meaning the DNA is able to form a, a new cell well, like so that the DNA isn't lost, right? So the intelligence of the past is captured and moved into the future, that's what that means. Then the cell self-destructs, and that's called apoptosis. So you've got autophagy, auto, self, phagy, to eat, and you've got apoptosis, which is cell suicide. <laughs> it's just like, commit suicide. The cell's like, I'm out, I'm done. And this to me is what's so cool, again, if you think of yourself more as a closed system than an open system, this is not waste. That cell shrinks and it starts to break apart into what are called apoptotic bodies. It starts to break apart and then those molecules are actually upcycled into the physiology. So like anyone who's like upcycled jewelry, like where you make something cooler out of garbage or waste or something someone was gonna throw away, that's what your body does only if you fast. Only if you fast, only if you fast. And there's been so much, I mean, I've been health and wellness since I was 16. It's when I first started reading health and wellness books. I was trying to get to the bottom of my migraines and allergies and I had weight creep, not bad because I was super athletic, but man, I could gain weight just like that. And all I read were diet books, like or, or like food books or like health books and all the health books focused on food, 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 food right foods, wrong foods. This is saying no food. It's very different. It's very simple. Like you just have to fast longer and these two things happen, autophagy and apoptosis. Even if you have a shit diet, these two things will still happen. And usually what happens if you have a shit diet and you start doing longer fasting times is autophagy happens, apoptosis happens, and all of a sudden you're like, I don't wanna eat shit. <laughs> I wanna eat really good food. <laughs> I want to eat really good food and because I'm not eating that much. So it's not what we're eating, it's food frequency. If I'm not eating that much, like it's kind of worth it. It's kind of worth it to feed myself well. Yeah, and it's, I'm saving all this money because I'm not wasting all this food. Okay, so let's look at the cell now. So this is a picture of what's happening within the cell that breaks stuff apart. To me, this is really, this is really interesting. This is a whole cell and in this whole cell, you can see that food particles come into the cell. Now food particles come into the cell if there are food particles in the bloodstream. If there's food particles in the bloodstream, it means you've eaten sometime in the last 13 hours. So if there's food particles in the bloodstream, they get absorbed, the cells have to take them on. And they do, and they store. But the problem is in a culture like ours where there's just not these long fasting times or longer seasons where there's more fasting as would naturally happen, uh, for our, our human ancestors and our primate ancestors and our mammalian ancestors for a very long time, at least, well, whatever, at least since there's been mammals on the planet, is what happens um, is that those lysosomes, which are these really negative pH molecules, are really super acidic molecules, they go and break down the food particles. So if there's food in the bloodstream, the lysosomes are super busy doing that, which means what? It means they can't digest... Let me go back. It means they can't digest other stuff. They can't digest viruses and pathogens. That's big, if, especially if you're like, I want to adapt to new viruses like COVID or things before they come out <clears throat> and before they take over. Like, you want to have a good strategy for your body to do that. That's just natural immune system. So the lysosomes, if you've been fasting and there's no sugar in your bloodstream, they start to do auto autophagy and they start to do apoptosis. So important that we understand that, that like, oh, it's an on off switch, right? And if you're not fasting for long enough, that means you will have chronic inflammation. That means you will have chronic disease, period. Like if your children aren't, same deal. It's, it's mammals. And it's just part of the evolutionary perspective of, of understanding our species. Okay, so 
Oh, should we talk? I want to talk about fat cells, but I also actually let me go here first. So I want to talk about inducers. This is my newest slide, Anna. You've never seen this one. So I want to talk about these things called called anthropogens, which are inducers, which are they're basically like that which creates a, a level of like how inflammation works in the system and why weight creep creates weight creep because that's the problem people get in it's just like first five pounds who cares like really next five pounds it's like oh my pants are not that comfortable anymore <laughs> right next five pounds it's like i need new pants right next five pounds it's like i'm just going to be fine and comfortable being overweight and there's this acceptance of that and it's like it's okay because there's people that are way more overweight than me and i still look fine and then like five more pounds and five more pounds and soon and maybe we stabilize at that maybe we stabilize just being 30 pounds overweight or we stabilize just being 20 pounds overweight or we stabilize just being 50 pounds overweight and we're like at our like our happy place but it's not really a deeply happy place because it's 50 pounds of inflammation in our physiology like that's really what we want to think it's like 50 pounds of waste or 10 pounds of waste or 20 pounds of waste within our physiology which isn't just like you can store waste at the dump and it doesn't affect the ecosystem. It affects everything. And that's really what this is showing is that when we are not fasting, right? So we, we're in a place of what's called chronic allostasis and allo means other. So there's homeostasis and allostasis. So our body's in constant reaction mode, like minute by minute by minute by minute. And what happens is in that other than mode, other than self mode, if something's other than, and Ayurveda is so eloquent with this, it means that if there's non-self within the self, it's going to draw on the immune system. Because the immune system's job is to identify that which are markers for non-self, that which are markers. And these markers are markers that appear with, with chronic, these are now my hand-drawn ones, so we're going to get messy because the artist hasn't hit these yet. So with chronic, chronic allostasis is really different than acute allostasis. So why does the immune system kick in? Well, what the immune system's been trained to look for over the in entire history of mammals, right, is acute inflammation. It's like something other, allo, is in the self. Let's attack it. And so in attacking it, it generates inflammation. Like that area of the body will, will tag it and generate inflammation. And a lot of, a lot of these tags are markers um, and mediators are what actually signals the immune system that there's something wrong over here, there's something wrong over here. Now, if you're healthy, say you're healthy and you get a, a virus like COVID, something like that, your body makes antibodies. So there's a localized acute inflammation, the body makes antibodies, the immune defense kicks in, and you have efficient metabolism, you have health at large, the body's healthier and actually more informed, it has more information from the virus. I feel like I'm going to get arrested for saying this right now. Our, our science is so backward with our media. But this is what happens. Like, this is how the physiology has adapted to viruses, you know, as mammals over. I mean, some viruses that we still get have been around for 200,000 years. They're back, they're traced back to hominids, things like staph. So our body's meant to survive and adapt. What happens when inflammation or allostasis goes chronic? So there's chronically other stuff involved in the physiology. That's how the body sees it. It's constantly not where it needs to be. So it's not in homeostasis. As you end up with more like, we well, can say LDL. You could say you have more chemokines. You can say you have more cytokines or more cortisol or more um, reactive oxygen species or ROS. Those are all things that end up being these uh, they're inducers. And what are they inducing? They're inducing an inflammatory response, which means it's drawing in your immune system. When you do that enough, you end up with insulin resistance, right? Because you have an insulin response to that increase in oxidative stress constantly. And then over time, you can become insulin resistant, meaning you can't regulate your own blood sugar. I was trying to explain this to Indy, who's 14, and she didn't understand diabetes. And we were talking about when you can't, when you're physi when you can on train your physiology to the extent that it can't remember how to do it, regulate its own blood sugar, right? That's insulin resistance. What we see over time is that le this is a at large system of dysmetabolism, dys meaning dysfunctional. So it's called DYS dash metabolism, dysmetabolism. And you also have this resistance to your hunger satiation mechanism with 
ghrelin and leptin. So you're no longer able to tell when you're hungry or full. And this is to me is what's so, so, so scary about weight creep is it's not easy to lose. It's not easy to reverse at a level where it gets worse and worse and worse. So the earlier you can catch it and the longer you can fast, the better. Now, if you're already, you know, we, we have people in our community that come in 80 pounds overweight and it can start making changes and it can start getting better, right? So it's not impossible, but like you don't want things, you don't want things to add up if you can avoid it. So that's disease at large. I'm almost done, Anna, with my going on and you can bring questions in from the forum. So chronic allostasis, chronic immune cell recruitment. So the immune system's chronically being recruited to deal with basically too much food coming in. So now, and it's so, it's so that simple to understand, like the immune system's getting involved with the digestive system. Physiology is so not designed to do this. We are so designed to intermittent fast and listen to hunger satiation signals, like so deeply designed when we're, you know, there's like the upper tongue and the lower tongue in, in oriental medicine, where it's like, we're satiating with the upper tongue because we're not in, in sync with our second chakra of like what we really want in life. We're not making the hard decisions that raise conflict because we're not getting what we want from ourselves, maybe from the people in our lives. And we don't know how to make that happen. So we just eat more, eat more, eat more. And then we've got chronic immune cell recruitment. So there's an ongoing stimulus to the immune system. And when that happens, there's a little inducer and there's the phagocyte. Remember the phago means to eat. So it's the cells that eat things. It's an immune cell that's being activated for digestion. It doesn't work that way. So that leads to, met, it's called meta-inflammation. That leads to dysmetabolism. It leads to disease at large, like we just went through. All right, I'll take a break, Anna, and we'll, then I'll go into fat cells and what's happening there, because I know it can get kind of cray-cray. It's great. So compelling. We have a couple of questions um, from Barbie Beavers. Sometimes my stomach forgets to tell me I'm hungry. I'll get a headache. What's up with that? I, I think it's going to depend on a few things on hydration primarily. Uh, and, and that can have to do with electrolytes. So it's, it's not just water for hydration, but it's really looking at like electrolyte balance and in the levels of fluidity because we should be able to fast comfortably um, it can also be correlated to caffeine intake so sometimes to extend our fasting times we take in more caffeine which is an awesome strategy especially for kaffas <laughs> but i know for me like i can like i'm pit a kaffa and i hit a point where i'm like oh no mm -mm. and it and it really changes day by day so like some days I can drink a lot of caffeine and some days I can't have like barely any, like barely, barely any, um, or something like that will happen where I'll get a secondary sign. Uh, so yeah, if you're wanting to go deeper into autophagy and apoptosis, and I mean, this is like the number one anti-aging medicine on the planet is like fasting. So it's important to figure out some of the things that are behind the other things that like, oh, I get a headache and then I need to eat. Uh, as opposed to like, what is my fasting rhythm? Set some goals around that, outline a timeline around that. <clears throat> and then, and then hide, like deeply hydrate for it. Uh, and that might mean that even that your foods are more electrolyte friendly and your foods might be, need to be more prebiotic and probiotic um, as well so that you're, you're deeply nourished. I mean, that was kind of what I was joking about before about like, you know, it's like you eat shit until like you can tell you're just eating like really good. And part of that is like feeding the microbiome, which we didn't have time to get into today, but uh, the microbiome needs very deep nourishment in order to create the right neurotransmitters and hormones for the human physiology, for human cells to thrive. So the more of we're aware of feeding our microbiome, uh, man, like that can make a huge, huge difference with, um, even with things like headaches. I mean, what also comes to mind is the parasinuses because they're so close to the head and the microbiome of the parasinuses and making sure that's super, super healthy. Um, there's nausea oils for that. If you're into urine therapy, there's snorting aged urine, which I think is probably the best medicine for the parasinuses to produce more nitric oxide, which can really open the head a lot, just open a lot more circulation into the brain. It's funny, like we often just don't think of our body of like, you know, our body's so smart. It's, it's, everything's functional. So the parasinuses are designed to create nitric oxide, which is expansive and, and uh, can just bring a lot more circulation into, into the head and relieve pain. 
Great. Yeah. Thanks, Barbie. We have a question from Sophie Roberts. How do you recommend working through the initial challenge of finding true hunger? Scheduling. So scheduling. Uh, we're we're going to do actually. I'll go back to my slides. So a, a few things that we have going on to help because like we do want to reverse chronic inflammatory diseases. We have a challenge coming up June twenty second to July thirteenth, the intermittent fasting challenge. And let me see if I have it here. Uh, it, for anyone who's like wants to start right away, like you can start with our intermittent fasting course, and I'll give you access into the challenge, which is a really great deal because the. Uh, if you go to here, do you have these, or can you type these in the chat, uh, Anna, yogahealer.com forward slash IF dash course, and then the promo code to get hundred bucks off is IF a hundred, and you'll get access into the course, but then you'll also get to do the challenge, and the challenge itself, I think, costs more than if you get into the course now, uh, and, and in the course, I'll lead you through, like, week by week what to do, but the, the general, to me, like, the general rule of thumb is this schedule it like schedule your fasting times and, and sometimes people find that you know if they've been doing like a 16 hour fast a day an eight hour feed time that's called a 16 8 that then shifting to like an 18 6 and just scheduling it just saying like i only eat between noon and six or whatever two and eight or ten and four or nine and three like choose your hours and just see if you can can stick to that and then notice what comes up and if you're on an 18.6 you can choose to do a 24. And, and you don't have to do it all the time but you could say like five out of seven days this week i'm going to do this rhythm and it's it's a harder rhythm that you're currently doing and then just see see what starts to come up see how hunger comes and goes hunger comes and goes in waves the longer you fast usually the further those sets are apart i'm a surfer and it's like waves coming waves come in sets right uh and sets are can be really different timings apart so we find for people like in the beginning they have really strong craving the more you have weight creep and the or the further you are towards your obesity and dave asprey really found this in in his book the fasting way uh, the more cravings intense the cravings are and part of the reason for those intense cravings are the endocrine disrupting chemicals that are cellular at the level actually i'll go back into a, a slide for this um, they're at the level of the fat tissue so let's look at what's going on in fat cells so on the right side fat cells in circulation um, sorry on the left side this is autophagy and apoptosis where you're fasting long enough for your fat cells to be called upon to release energy energy in the form of triglycerides so if someone has like high triglyceride levels, like that's a sign right there that you, your fat cells are not in circulation, they're out of circulation. And that's the image on the right side of the screen where they're out of circulation. So when your fat cells are in circulation, functioning, meaning pulsing, like I like to think of it as leaning out, are your fat cells leaning out? That's how you know if you're getting hungry enough, if you have lean fat cells. What does that mean? It's like, well, you don't have a lot of white fat. You don't have a lot of extra white fat. Everything's like it's a, either in circulation or getting replenished uh, or in circulation, which means it's getting the squeeze. It's getting the squeeze on. It's getting the lean on. So when that happens, it's not just like autophagy and apoptosis, like what's actually happening in that fat cell is the fat cell stimulating the release of growth hormone. And anyone who's like over 50 is like, give me some of that growth hormone. <laughs> Pass it over here. Like some of us get injections for stem cells, right? Uh, and that's sort of the thing is like your body's naturally generating and regenerating only, only if your fat cells are in circulation. Your fat cells are only in circulation if you're fasting long enough. And the older you get, the more you got to experiment with this. I mean, really, the more you got to be on like, how lean should my fat cells get? And then what happens when I put on too much white fat? Okay, so you're releasing ketones, you're releasing growth hormone, you're releasing adiponectin out of your fat cells. Stem cells then can optimize. This is huge. The cells that can become anything next, those get optimized. So that's the trade off on the other side of inflation. It's not just about body acceptance and feeling great. It's about like on the other side of that is like your stem cells are actually getting smarter so you can feel healthier day by day as you age. 
And what happens with that? You have an optimization of, of your brain, of your memory. Memory, yep. So anyone who's forgetting things, brain fog, memory, right? If you don't have clear thinking, you're not putting the squeeze on your fat cells. Genetic expression, like what does that mean? It's like as good as you get, <laughs> that, you can get as good as you get. And then lean muscle and cellular regeneration. Now on the flip side, if you're eating too frequently, and I get like eating too much is hard. I've struggled with that in the past. Like eating too frequently is actually much easier. And as you cut out eating too frequently, you get more ap apoptosis, you get the squeeze on your fat cells. So to me, it's a much easier way to go than trying to reduce the amount of food. It's just reduce the amount of times you eat a day and, and reduce um, the length of time of your eating window. Because if you don't, this is what happens. Your fat cells are out of circulation and they're releasing all those inducers, cytokines, adaptokines, chemo, chemokines, right? These things you've kind of heard of like, oh yeah, cytokines. I heard about that in COVID because there's these cytokine storms. Well, if you've got weight creep, you've got cytokines. Like you've got like a mini, it's not a storm. It's like you've got rain showers. You've got cytokine rain showers and they're constant right and they're bogging the system up so you get inflation you get the inflammatory markers that we already talked about and those markers stimulate more inflammation right because they're now recruiting the immune system to do the job of the digestive system and that's disrupting the endocrine system and the adipose tissue or the fat cells are now considered a, a massive component potentially the largest component of the endocrine system of what feeds a healthy endocrine system which is all your hormones and i posted anna i don't know if you saw this post on I think it's a body thrive. It's like if if the body thrive habits have helped you with an autoimmune disease, like list your autoimmune disease, and there's like 20 autoimmune diseases listed. So autoimmune disease, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the endocrine system. We're talking about the immune system. And I hope some light bulbs are going off and some dots are getting connected and helping you understand. Because I know the more I understand this on a cellular level and on a systems level, on like what's the job of my fat? My fat's an organ. Oh, it's an organ. What kind of organ? Oh, my fat's an endocrine organ. Okay, and if I don't treat that organ right, what happens? Like people have like heart health, liver health. How about fat cell health? I think we should have fat cell health month and then maybe we can reverse that. 50% <laughs> of the adult American population becoming obese by 2030. Okay, so then you get all the diseases, cancer, autoimmune, cardiovascular, and obesity. You get all that. You get all that just from your fat cells being out of circulation. All right, so... Um, Anna is here to do body goal sessions and you can have a conversation with her. She's not threatening at all. She's not salesy at all. Like she's just gonna help you figure out what to do. So if you're like, I have weight creep, then you need to schedule one of these because we don't wanna see you keep like, I don't know, Anna, like how many people it's like you've talked to in the years past who like they didn't, they didn't follow through, they didn't connect, they didn't do the thing. And it's like, they've gained another five pounds or they've gained another 15 pounds. You guys, this is so reversible. The stakes are so high. I hope after this, you're like, oh, fuck, the stakes are high, like chronic disease. Like, no, thank you. I don't want to have, because on that list of AI disease, it was Hashimoto's thyroiditis that took number one. I'm not sure if you saw that. We'll see where that tally is by the end of the week. But it's, you guys, this is what happens. It's like, it gets, it gets worse. So yogahealer.com forward slash body dash goals, and you'll talk to Anna, and, and we'll see if we're fit to work together to accomplish your body goals. I just want to read, I want to read this from, I think I put it on here. Oh, I have it on my other screen. Uh, this was a really cool thing when I posted this morning, you know, how have the body thrive habits helped with autoimmune disease? Oh yeah, here it is. This is from Nicole. So she did our detox and she's been, she's in body thrive and doing intermittent fasting. And she says, my weight has dropped. My blood sugar has gone down by half. She's someone that struggles with that insulin resistance. So her blood sugar's gone down. I mean, this is, and this is fast. Um, and I expect normal to come in the months to come. Inflammation between my hand joints. And this is what I love. It's like, what else happens when you go into apoptosis and autophagy through fasting? So inflammation between my hand joints and feet is down. They feel much finer. Elimination is better. And boy, do I feel it when I consume something I should really choose not to have. And to me, that's really what it's all about in terms of like, if we look back at the 
the negative stressors and making short term decisions because we don't want to deal with conflict because we don't want to make the hard choices because we don't want to have the breakdown that really leads to next level competencies because we don't want to feel hunger. And so then what happens if we degenerate instead of having experiences like Nicole's having in Body Thrive? All right, Anna, any other questions? Are we good on, do we understand weight creep, first of all? Yeah, I think the other thing that it would be helpful for, for people to realize is that this is, you know, a long game, you know, when to expect results. Yeah, when to, I mean, and it, it's so variable. And to me, it's so variable on the deeper, like, what are the deeper issues underneath it? Like, what are we really not solving for underneath it? I know for me, I, got, I have a chapter in Wild Habits, uh, which isn't out yet. It'll be out the end of June. I promise you guys, for real. <laughs> it's like, I, I had like this roll of flab, like when I was 40. And I, and I just started to just, it started to drive me crazy. It was like right around my middle and I'm 49 now and it's not there anymore, you know? And it, to me, it's like, what was I not, what was I not dealing with? I'll tell you, I was pushing, like I was just pushing my, like my, my ambition, my drive was just really pushing and pushing my body. And then I would, I would like snack on dark chocolate, right? That was my like, sort of like go-to little in the closet snack on dark chocolate uh and i wasn't i wasn't doing i didn't know to the i didn't know about intermittent fasting not like i do now um i don't think that really entered our world until around 2017 so maybe about six years ago so this was like after that was part of what i was looking for so i'm like there's an easier way i'm thinking about food way too much like why am i thinking about food my body doesn't need it my emotions need it. Now, why is my, why am I signaling towards food? So depending on how willing we are to get to the core of that issue, to me is what so much of it depends about. And to me, this is where, you know, the practices on the mat, the practices on the cushion, the practices with like deep yoga teachers that like having, uh, having, and I see this all the time in Body Thrive, like having core people around you that are willing to help with the deeper emotional issues that need to be broken down, that that can very much accelerate the breakthrough. Um, it's not about forcing the body to fast longer at all. It's about finding deep satiation, like really deep satiation in life, and then noticing how, oh, all of a sudden, like food, it's like, why would I do that? <laughs> That's not nearly as satiating. So again, how long it takes is going to depend on how deeply someone wants to get into the the layers under the layers of why they're overeating, why they're putting too much, why they're not letting their fat cells circulate. Yeah, and I think it's worthwhile adding in there that it's a lot more easier to, to go through that process when you belong to a community, when you have people around you with yeah. the same, going through it's, the same process. Yeah, I mean, especially if you, if yeah, exactly. I mean, and that's, I mean, in the way I finally learned, <laughs> I learned a new word, group intervention. <laughs> Thank you to the mental health experts in Western psychology. They call it group intervention. Like that's what it, you know, if we look at like pop psychology, positive psychology, um, if anyone's interested in the studies of why it's much faster to transform in good company, like they always, and like the yogis, you say, you know, it's like, keep good company, like be in good company, be in good company, pay attention to your company, right? Cultivate your company choose the five people you spend the most time with based on their habits like i mean that it really really comes in and most of you're like i can't i can't leave like my child and my partner and my boss and like their habits are horrible like they all have weight creep you know i mean i was at the soccer field the other day. the soccer field like these are the kids that are active I'm like an hour into like mainstream idaho away from my little mountain town at least 30 percent of the adults were obese at least 50% of the children on the soccer fields were overweight. And I, I mean, I just, I cry inside because I know what it's like. I mean, I know what it's like to carry, I mean, I've probably never carried more than an extra 15 pounds on my body, but I was unhappy. I didn't, you know, I mean, I think we've all, maybe not all of us have been there, but you know, it's like when we don't feel 
has nothing to do with body acceptance either. It has, it's so, on the, it's on the energy beneath the cellular level. It's very, very subtle. Deep fulfillment is very, very subtle. And it's so easy because of the increase in sugar consumption, because of the increase in vegetable oil in our diet, because of, the, because of cheap calories. I mean, it all just comes down to calories are too cheap. Bad calories are way too cheap and they're super addictive. And there's so many companies making so much money off you being addicted to eating too frequently, too much crap. So it's like, unless we're willing to be with people who get it and can help us with those deeper emotional issues and, and really get to the core of what do we really want and help us in the hard times. Like we see it all the time in Body Thrive, like someone's doing great, everyone's cheering them on. And then someone's like, oh man, it happened today. I saw it, like someone posted like, I can't find my center. Like I'm so like I've been so over involved with all these things that aren't my true path, and then I'm like so over involved. And then there's all this support, and there's all this reengagement and inspiration, and yeah, group intervention, and that's everything that we've done. Is it's like not just a course and curriculum; it's a community. And to me, you can more or less, you know, you can more or less toss the curriculum and just like. <laughs> Take in 10% of the course and rely 100% of the community, and that's the fastest path. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. That is amazing. Are we good? We're good. Okay. So our final calls to action are like, if anyone is like, shoot, yep, I want in, I want to start intermittent fasting, and I want to do that challenge, go to yogahealer.com forward slash IF for intermittent fasting, IF dash course. Use promo code IF100, uh, and this will this will get you right into the intermittent fasting course. And I told my team that also means you get a pass to the challenge. The challenge is going to be two hundred and forty-seven dollars. So this is like a really screaming hot deal, and you'll get into the fasting curriculum right away. To me, that's super super important. I just also wanted to answer that uh, you that second part. Like one of the things that we do in the intermittent fasting challenge is the five day fast mimicking diet. That's where you get into those deeper levels of hunger and you kind of see, you know, it's like when a child is scared of the monsters in the closet and you walk in and you turn on the light and you're like, oh, it was a shadow of the, you know, the monster suit in the closet or whatever. It was a shadow of the flannel shirt that looked funny on the wall or in the cowboy hat paired with sitting on the closet. And like you kind of, that's what happens in the fast mimicking diet where you just get to go in really deep into calorie restriction for just a few days you get to experience deep apoptosis because the whole community is doing it it's actually 75 percent easier it's not like 100 percent easier but it's at least 75 percent easier to do i notice it every time i'm like i don't want to do it the community is doing it okay i'm in like oh by day two it's like oh thank gosh thank gosh the community is doing this and then you get to see how the hunger is just like the scary monster to the kid and then you turn the light on and you're like it's a flannel shirt and a hat <laughs> And I got to clean this closet, you know, and like, and that's all it is. And then there's this, these waves of deep intuition that come with the deeper apoptosis. There's these waves of your life becoming holy again, as your body becomes holy again, as your body becomes sacred and you become hypersensitive to what you really, really want, right? You get, you get hypersensitized to like deep, deep desire. That's like second chakra desire of like, driving towards next generation what you're generating next and you pay attention to that and you live your life from that and everything starts to change and you become less afraid of what of what hunger is really all about you can become yeah. less afraid of life yeah and i highly recommend the body goals session so that we can meet you where you're at now customize get ready for that uh experiment for the challenge and you know, the sooner you schedule the body goals, the more psyched you'll be and ahead of the game for June 21. Thank yeah, you. Anna's amazing yeah. at helping you see where you're at, see where you want to go, know exactly what to do next and get ready. I, I mean, it's it's just awesome. So that's at yogahealer.com yeah. forward slash body dash goals. Okay. Yeah. It's really fun. There's lots of information out there. So we'll just help you simplify it and and get super clear on the next steps. Yeah. Cause I mean, that's the thing too, is when, when you've got weight creep, like your mind can convince you of anything of like, oh, I read this and now I can do that. And it's like, well, we'll, we'll help you get to where you want to go. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Anna. You bet.